Dude. We are live. Don't I just I discovered the cure to brain fuses. Like, <laughs> like Jesse I Jesse's discovered the cure. Doctors don't know shit. Samurai <laughs> figured it out. <laughs> We're live. What's going on, everybody? Jesse is hey! Jesse is going to un I know un you tuned in for woodworking, but I'm about to revolutionize your life and cure you of all brain freezes from this moment forward, okay? So this is how a brain freeze works, okay? Yep. I heard this from a doctor, so it's right. <laughs> um, so when you drink a cold drink, right, a lot of people think, oh, the cold goes through the roof of your mouth and freezes your brain. No, it doesn't, dumbass. Um, because above the roof of your mouth is your nasal cavity and then your brain. So the cold does not go through the roof of your mouth like some people think. What happens is when you're drinking the cold fluid, it goes down your throat and you have blood arteries that are along the side of your throat that go to your brain. And if it gets too cold, those arteries begin to spasm and contract and prevent the blood flow from getting to your brain. And so you get a brain freeze. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, so one way to combat brain freeze, obviously drink your drink slower. But when you're sweating your bag off on a hot day, like it's been crazy hot out here, 41 degrees, we're breaking records here in Canada. Uh, you don't. You need to get this ice down to cool yourself off. So, swishing it around in your mouth until most of the slushiness melts helps. But I find I still get a brain freeze. Now, the other way to combat brain freeze: cough. How simple is that? Try what? it. I guarantee it works. There's something to do with the cough that it like forces your blood vessels to either constrict or like pump the blood. But if you like. <coughs> Like, force yourself to cough right as you feel the brain freeze coming on. All of a sudden, it just stops it dead in its tracks. So in a world in a world where we've recently been taught not to cough or sneeze in public, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Samurai yeah, you, is prescribing. When, whatever, it doesn't matter. Brain freeze is hurt. You pull your mask down, you take a swig, and you just go. <coughs> it doesn't matter where you are, you'll cure that brain freeze. You might get arrested for coughing in public, but you won't have a brain freeze. Until there you go. Love it. Okay, just blessed your life. Happy Canada today. Well, there we go. This is uh, welcome to the live. If you're just joining us, you missed some brilliant advice or uh, prescription or whatever you want to call it from Doctor Samurai uh, regarding brain freezes. Um, we are going to we're going to do a quick uh, touch in here, get an update from Jesse what's going on with his property. Um, we'll do some Q and A in a little bit and just Videos hang out. Going live tomorrow, another episode another episode of the samurai off-grid adventures and the off-grid samurai come on that, that's our tagline here the off-grid samurai i'm gonna call it whatever i want well i'm just saying if we stick with a the theme you know it's easier for people to follow along okay well maybe we could get a more creative name than off-grid off samurai off like how badass is that it doesn't get much more badass okay comment if you're watching do you think that that is a legitimate Front runner for a name for the samurai, yeah. or should we do a better? T-shirt, off-grid samurai, and it'll be like me, like holding up a chainsaw, like a silhouette above it, like that. Come on, that would look sweet. Oh, let the people Come talk; on. they can vote. vote. Say, comment, comment if you think that's a good idea. Um, so, Jesse, what's happening up at the property? Uh, we've got this video coming out tomorrow, which is focused on you making. <gasps> you guys, I'm back doing woodworking. Imagine that. I know I've been doing boat stuff for so long, and all you guys are like, oh, I'm sad. You're not doing what I want you to do anymore. <laughs> but guess what? I still love to woodwork, and I build, in this next video, you will see me build a beautiful timber frame. Shitter. Outhouse. A, sh a throne shitter. Room. The throne room. Yes. So I uh, built a timber, a little timber frame privy, and... Boated that out there and put it together with my my boys helped me. It was pretty awesome. Uh, super hot. And I got some of the siding done. I need to finish that up this weekend and get a door on it. But the structure's up. There's a, a tar paper roof on it. I have the metal roof up there. And I'm going to get that hopefully installed as well. And then we're going to move on to building my little tool shed slash bunkie. Um, so I'm building a little 10 by 10 shed out there and it's going to be beautiful as well 
with timber frame joinery. So all of you guys that have been missing your samurai woodworking fix don't need to worry. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. I so can do off grid and s still be a woodworker at the same time. Yeah. So if you guys uh, are patient enough, well, you have to be patient because that video is not coming out until tomorrow. Uh, you can see all that. You prefabbed it in your shop, correct? Yeah. So I built the frame in the shop just because I got all the tools set up and it's way more efficient. Um, and then I took it up there, uh, assembled it, built built a little uh, some little rock. I just set it on rocks. Like I dug some holes, filled them with gravel packed them down, put some boulders on top, and then scribed the floor onto the rocks, and then built the timber frame on top of that, and then got the one by eight kind of board and batten siding. I got all the one by eight on, um, but I, I'm just working on the battens, and then I'm gonna build a little door. I'm gonna do a Dutch door, okay? So you might think, why would you put a Dutch door on a, on a outhouse? Well, the view is epic from this throne, okay? So I was like, I don't wanna, open up this door and go inside, even though the timber frame is gorgeous. Like he's, you're sitting in there and it's beautiful. There's joinery all around you. I put these uh, live edge Arbutus slabs, like curving slabs on the side that I'm gonna drill some dowels in for like towel hangers and stuff. Cause I'm sure people will use it as a change room as well. You can see it in the background of the photo there. That's that's as close as you're getting to yeah, it's kind of yeah. tease there. Tease are in there. And then so, so I wanna do a Dutch door because it's kind of up on a hill a little bit, but it's looking over like the camp and where eventually the cabin's gonna go. And so, you know, people might glance up at the, at the pooper and they don't want you just sitting there with the door wide open. That's just, that's just not classy. But you don't wanna sit inside this little wood box when there's just a gorgeous water and mountain view directly in front of you. So if I build a Dutch door, you have the bottom half of the door closed, which is giving you privacy and covering all your giblets. Uh, but you can still see out the top and take in the view. So it's let's just say I'm really I'm really happy about this outhouse and having used it already. It's 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 probably my it's the best place I've ever, <laughs> I've ever had a movement. It's well, hey, we've been on some some uh, there was one on the Sayward Lakes that was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, no, and that's what not, I know. That's not I'm not saying that lightly because I <laughs> I've I've deuced in some epic location. Uh, <laughs> but this, this is like top tier. This is this is top tier uh, place to take it out. So to quote your son, I texted you this the other day because when I was going through the footage, it was really funny. You can kind of hear it quietly in the video. So if you're watching, uh, pay attention when this it's being assembled. Uh, I think it was Lo Logan said, there's going to be a roof so people can poop even when it's raining. <laughs> even when it's raining. <laughs> He's like, so people can poop even when it's raining. Exactly. Like we, We've covered all the bases. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to be out in the woods squatting while it's raining. It's yeah. Fun. Um, so, heat wave. Did you get anything done? I don't know if people people are oh. tuning in from all over the world, but where we are in BC, Canada, has been like record-setting heat wave. Um, we were up to what was the? It was like forty-four 40, or something like that. It's not in yeah. Victoria. I think it was forty-four. We're up in Port Alberni because it's it's actually hotter up where my property is. It's in this little valley, and it's kind of like it just gets really hot in the summertime. Yeah. So yeah, we were like forty two or forty four or something like that. Which is like a hundred. What is that? One hundred and eight or something like that. And some Fair of you thing. people, I get it. You live in that like year round because your brains don't work. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but up here, we're not, we're, not, we're not prepared for that kind of heat. Okay, <laughs> it's so bad. Like we're we're used to twenty five Celsius. 30 we're all like we start complaining at 30 okay so it was it was over 40 and people were just losing their ever loving mind like, yeah. it, it was bad I, there was there was igloos melting everywhere yeah tons of canadians yeah. lost their igloos yeah the sleds weren't working nothing it was yeah. brutal it was terrible so yeah it, all over the west coast i see uh, david saying seattle 112 like yeah seattle uh 
Washington and Oregon were hit too. Like it's just like crazy, crazy. So you, you didn't, I'm assuming you didn't get a lot of work done in that heat. Honestly, we, it was crazy just from the boat, getting off the boat and like walking up about 20 feet in elevation to get up to the kind of flat part of the property. It was like a 10 degree difference. Like you could feel the heat, like every step you took away from the boat, it was like, Oh my God, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And then you get up and you're like, throw all your gear down. And I was like, I gotta get back in the water. And you like run down, like dive in the water and your shirt would be dry in like 10 minutes. Yeah. I was just jumping in like fully clothed just because it was like keeping me cool and keeping me from like burning to death. So um, um, there was, it was an- nice. It was great to be on the lake, but I did not get much done. It was like, I'd go up and I'd start to work and I'd be like, I can't think straight. I gotta go swimming. And so, yeah, I just kind of gave it, I gave up after a while. Yeah. Um, I know there was a, there was a actually a forest fire up in that area. Did you hear about that? Or was that close to you? Really? No. In Port Alberni. Yeah. The other day, a um, couple acres, right? It said Sprout Lake Fire Department. Wow. Was there. So Sheesh. maybe That's we want to look scary. into that. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> yeah. Well, a forest fire came through that whole property a couple, like five years ago. The whole mountain is yeah. burnt. Burnt, yeah, because uh, the, uh, there was an interview of a lady saying, like, yeah, she said two or three years ago there was a fire up on the hillside there, so she was referring to something recent. That's why I'm trying to um, clear as much of the dead wood on the ground yeah. as possible because, yeah. uh, and I'm like, I want to go back as far as I can into the up the property um, away from the shoreline and clear all the dead wood because it's literally like tinder. There's just like might as well just be matchsticks all over the ground. Um, there's so many uh, small, like fallen trees, dead trees. So that's like my priority to hopefully this summer is just to clear as much wood as possible, which sucks because I've already got like huge burn piles that need to be burned. Yeah. And obviously, I'm not burning in this weather. Yeah, that's uh, what this we got a question here from Kevin. He's asking how the provincial fire ban has affected your plans on cleaning up the property. So, um, <clears throat> oh, have you thought of a chipper? No, I haven't thought of a chipper. Um, there's some of those off-grid channels I've seen that they've gotten chippers and use that for like doing um, their gardening and stuff, putting down on yeah. pathways and gardens and stuff. I could see that being use useful. I don't know. Those things are aren't cheap. You got to to get a decent one. You got to pay like five grand or something, don't you? Yeah, you could rent it. Yeah, maybe that would be a lot of chipping. Um, so yeah, the plan as of you, now is just to make as many big piles as possible. And then when the fall comes and the rains hit again, we will just, uh, light it all up then. Maybe you, know, you could October find October or whatever. Maybe you could get help from Dale. You get Chip and Dale up there. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Fire. You are what? fired. Get, that sh- <laughs> get out of there. <laughs> I know Kevin's gonna like that one. He likes <laughs> cheesy jokes, I think. Um, the dad humor is still yeah, with you. Brutal. Uh, there was another question here. Oh, this. up here. Look at this crap. This soggy paper straw. Can you believe this junk? Uh, here is another question. Uh, we're just gonna roll into questions. This is just like a free for all time. If you got questions, throw them in the chat. We're just gonna chat about what's going on at the property for Jesse. Oh, that's um, a good question. There you go. What's that's what's the cost? Just like the fuel cost or whatever to get there. Yeah. Um, right now it's not bad. Like I got my diesel truck, um, and it's only about a quarter tank each way. Um, so, in Canada, um, if you don't live in the U.S., where the last place where you can get reasonable fuel costs, uh, here we pay. Well, what, are, what are we tipping the scales at now? It's like a buck sixty-two, I think. Yeah, I think it even went up. A lot. liter. Yeah, that's no, that's the most recent one, I think. Okay. It was like a buck fifty, which was stupid already. And then it went up to like a buck sixty-two a liter. So times that by four, and you'll have your your um, your gallon price for you Americans. So that's like what, seven, seven dollars a gallon or something like that? It's ridiculous, whatever. That's it is. what we pay here in Canada. So if you think it's getting out of control <laughs> on the west coast of America at three dollars or whatever you guys pay for a gallon. <laughs> We're paying more than double. Yeah. Just north of you, where we actually make a lot of the gas comes from Canada, but we still pay $7 for it a gallon. Um, So, yeah, it's back when it was, 
you know, it only cost me a hundred bucks to fill up my tank. That would have been $25 each way, approximately $50 return trip. Um, but it takes about two and a half hours driving plus the boat though. So the boat fuel probably adds, you know, another, it's only about a 15 minute boat ride. So maybe I don't know, another 10 bucks. So do you have Depends um, on the boat that I'm using? If I'm using the skiff, it's obviously going to take a little bit more, more fuel. But yeah, I'm definitely shelling out a lot more gas money these days because my commute to the property is two and a half hours in a truck and a trailer and a boat and all that sort of stuff. Whereas I used to just walk down my driveway and go into my shop. So, so is your, I I haven't been up to the property yet. Uh, Is your procedure to take the tinny up on a trailer every time to get over? Yeah, right now that's, uh, we've been trying to find a slip on the lake, but there's pretty much nothing um, available. Um, I've even thought about going door to door (laughs) because I'm like, (laughs) some of these people have these really big docks that are just empty. I'm like, man, maybe they, maybe I could just pay them monthly to leave my boat at their dock and park in their driveway. Um, So yeah, I've just been taking my little 14 foot aluminum tin, tinny, I call it, um, with a 20 horsepower on it up, up and back, which is nothing to tow it with the trailer. It maybe weighs like 600 pounds or something like that. Yeah. So that's, doesn't really affect the gas mileage too much. Um, and, but it's a pretty rink, rinky dink little boat. You can't pretty, you can put a, maybe four or five people in it and, tiny bit of gear and then it's it's pretty much that's all it can handle so we're looking forward to getting a better runabout here which we're going to be importing my father-in-law's boat um from seattle um this month hopefully so then we'll have a 19 foot with a 150 yamaha outboard on it and that'll be a much more reliable runabout to be able to get back and forth but we'll that one we're going to try and store that one somewhere up uh, near the lake, like at a storage place, if we can't find a slip for it, that way I can just park it at the at a storage place, and then just drive home, yeah. pick it up, launch it, kind of a thing. A little yeah. bit more, a little bit more logistics, but save save on gas and potential, you know, trailering troubles that you'd have. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, if you're making that's, that's... if you're making trips up and down the island and you're towing trailers which I probably will be most of the time. Like I'm taking a huge timber order up this weekend. Um, got a buddy of mine, one of the Makers Mob members um, who came to my first timber framing workshop. And we've become good friends um, since then. He lives in Vancouver. He's coming over and he's going to come help me out of the property. And, oh, nice. And uh, so it'll be awesome to have an extra set of hands because my flipping buoy that I put out with three 100-pound um. concrete anchors – is drifting my neighbor sent me another picture of the boat and it's like up against his log jam again and i'm like are you kidding me 300 pounds of concrete couldn't hold that boat in one spot like the wind picks up really good there so wow. i'm i'm getting an education let me tell you on <laughs> uh, on how to keep a how to not you know tie up your boat properly and stuff so yeah, three three five gallon pails. I filled with concrete and put eye bolts in them, and I chained them all together and dropped them to the bottom with a big three quarter inch rope and shackle and some chain and a buoy to be able to leave my skiff out there because I don't have a dock set up yet. And I was like, oh, finally we've got a reliable thing. And then my neighbor sends me a pic. He's like, when are you coming up again? Your boat's tangled up in our log boom or whatever. And he's like, it's not going anywhere. But he sent me out. So I was just like, <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so I need to go up there and rescue my boat and untangle the lines from their log jam line or their log boom. <laughs> Cause everybody up there has a log boom. Another thing that I have to figure out how to do is, uh, the way the wind picks up really good every couple of days comes just directly down the valley at, at us and, you know, kicks up some pretty good waves. And so that's just going to destroy my dock and smash the boat to the dock and all that sort of stuff. So I need to put a, a bunch of logs. Everybody kind of has a log boom about a hundred feet offshore where they link a bunch of logs together with the chains and anchor them down. And that kind of breaks the waves as they come at you. And, and so the water on the inside of the log boom where your boat and dock are stays a lot calmer kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. so that's another thing I got to figure out how to do because I don't really have any trees that are you know big enough. You need some pretty big suckers, like three foot diameter. Um, logs to be able to break the waves and so there's some logging companies and like kind of bridge building companies that 
you know, we'll have access to that. So I'm just trying to f make, make some contacts and source some logs so that I can stretch them out in front of my property. And then I'll have a little bit of a sheltered cove uh, area where the waves and the wind and then if my boat does get loose, it'll at least, you know, be stuck inside the log boom and not just like drift off down yeah. the lake. So yeah. anyways, the stress level and the logistics are, I'm still getting schooled here pretty, pretty good on. You're, on you're learning and that's great. That's, that's what great. it's all about. I'm, yeah. I'm a glutton for punishment when it comes to that sort of stuff. Just, um, so we got a bunch of questions coming in here. So let's try and fire through uh, some of these guys. We'll go back here a bit. And uh, here's one that's not property related, but um, can anyone tell me how I'd go about making a draw leaf table? It'd be my first table. You want a, a draw is, leaf table? So like a table with a leaf in it? I'm yeah, guessing. I would think so. Yeah. Do we? We don't have any tutorials for that. I don't think anyone's Very done. specific angle for the runners. So that's the little pieces of wood that slide on each other. Cause I know you can get hardware for that. Um, I would, I would probably look into that if I were you. Um, I don't, I don't know where there, there would be a place to source that, but I'm pretty sure you can buy like hardware kits for draw leaves. Cause they'll have like <clears> little <throat> metal, little metal tabs or whatever that help align everything. Mm -hmm. But I guess you could do it with wood and dowels and that sort of stuff. Uh, essentially I would try and make the angle, like if you're going to do like angled pieces of wood that will kind of lock into each other and slide, I would try and do like the steeper, the angle, the better. So like 45 degrees, I, I wouldn't go less than 30 maybe. Cause like the, if you, if you have a smaller angle, like there's just like there's lift and mo more movement in it. So the steeper, the angle, the more it kind of locks things into place. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I would I say would, I would say put it. I mean, if you, you do like a tongue and groove runners, and then they're like actually locked in a channel yeah. as opposed to just like angled pieces, or angled, or angled. dowels or dominoes, maybe. Yeah, I don't know something to align it. But if you're, I think Ivan, I think you remember the Makers Mob. So probably best bet would be to put it in the Facebook group if you're not a part of that Facebook uh, group. Post that question, and, and there'll be there definitely be some people in there. That'll be able to give you a better idea, and, and even Jesse can. can as get... much as I like to punish myself doing things like figuring things out, there are certain times where I'm. I'll at least try and copy a table that I know of, right? So I've got like that table behind me is like a, a draw like leaf table that has hardware and stuff. So I would look underneath there, and then I would try and at least design if I'm going to make it all out of wood. I would copy, you know, the amount of runners, where they're placed, and, and you know, at least on the first try, try and do that. Um, try to mimic something that you know already works, like a functioning prototype, mm -hmm. before you just go, ah, I'm going to figure it out myself. It's like that's, you know, you want to start with a certain base knowledge of, of how to make it work properly. Uh, what size is the whole property? So um, they're kind of narrow properties. It's a five, five and a half almost acres. Um, so it's about 150 feet wide and it goes back like 600 and change, 600 and some feet back. Uh, so that would be what, uh, 200 meters or something like that? 75 or no. I have no idea. <laughs> We're, we're from Canada. We use the metric system, but we Just don't. Just 150 the by system. 600, whatever. <laughs> Good enough. So we, we, everything on paper with the government is all in metric, but we all still communicate in feet and inches, especially in the building trade. Yeah. Um, so it's weird. We're still imperial, but we're not imperial. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we all still do height in feet and weight and you know pounds and it's just the weird it's the weirdest thing we're, we're canada we're weird uh mr mr fa yeah you can you can ask anything you want as long as it's woodworking related we don't you know yeah anything N nothing political it's nothing we're political keep, we're, we're keeping it uh keep it safe here you know this is yeah. a safe this is a safe place it's a very safe place <laughs> uh let's see here what do we got uh, here's a good one. 
So someone's asking about, oh, here we go. Sorry, I'm going to go back here. Is the stack of I Love Timber that you posted earlier today for your tool shed? Good you, question. Made, you made a post today? Yeah, I just put a post up on the Facebook group okay. uh, showing all the timber that I just uh, ordered, all the yeah. yellow oh, yellow cedar. Yeah. You should see the beams. I'll post, I'll post, Kevin, I'll post a picture, a close up of the of the six by 12, at least one of them, the one that I can see that's kind of on the bottom of the pile, it's like clear on the one side anyways. Might have knots on the other side, but we're talking like six by 12 inches by 12 feet long, and it's just like perfect, like not a knot in it. Wow. So I'm like, oh, I got to put that beam like front and center somewhere. But I've ordered all that timber is, is for like the dock. <clears throat> I'm getting like an aluminum truss ramp. 24 foot truss ramp to go down from the land because the rock's a little bit higher. So it's kind of like a ramp that'll move. Um, that's going to mount. And then there's two, like six, there's like a 16 foot boardwalk kind of or ramp that go is, will be built or a deck that'll be built on top of the rock that the draw ramp will attach to. So it's essentially decking material, framing timbers for the, the decking to, and stairs to get up onto the property from the water so so yeah all the timber for the dock decking for the ramp and then i i think about 30 some feet of you know six foot wide timber um boardwalks to get up onto the onto the property so nice got a um, lot of sawdust to make here in the in the next few weeks docks and boardwalks coming up uh give us two uh, people no. are still hooked on my tool belt hey i yeah. honestly like i i got really close to getting that thing into production well wouldn't say really close i made some progress um and then the whole covid thing hit and then just was hard china manufacturing and then and just the stuff that's going on over in china um with like the genocide and just you know government stuff i was like i don't know if i feel good about you know having stuff manufactured overseas right now and then with all the shipping and weird stuff i was like i'm not even gonna get it. bother trying to uh get products from overseas right now and then yeah making them locally was just not feasible do you so, have a, do you have a like an in-depth i've got a couple of videos on my youtube channel if you search tool vest on my youtube channel you should be able to pop up the two videos where i yeah. made my first one and then i did a a revised version uh, where I changed a bunch of stuff to what I have it set up as now. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want, you can, uh, <clears throat> there's a company in the United States called like Atlas 46 or something like that. If you want a ripped off version and of they, the Samurai they ripped off my tool vest and basically made a ballistic nylon version of it and with all the same features and, and design and, and just basically hijacked my design. Shortly after I, I think it even, even has a magnet in the back. Yeah, you right? could even get a magnet Velcro magnet attachment for the saw to go on your back and everything. Like they just like they basically they just chined me. They just they <laughs> stole my intellectual property and were like, "Hey, if you can't manufacture it, we can." Uh, and so yeah, yeah, I think it's like the Stratus Open Core Tool Vest or something I like. How, I love how they ripped you off and you're promoting it and trying to yeah, sell it. Just, well, I feel for people because I understand what it's like to to not have a good tool system, to not have a good tool belt, or you know, to be to suffer from white man no butt syndrome, where you know you can't keep a tool belt on your hips because you got no ass and it just hangs down, and you got to have suspenders and all that sort of stuff, right? So. So yeah, my tool vest solved a lot of those problems, but I just can't get it to market and other people obviously are. So I'm just like, Hey, if you're really hurting, you know, there are, there are tool vests out there that mimic mine to a T. Um, yes, Alan, I am planning on building a cabin. Um, so the zoning, uh, on the property allows for s up to a 1600 square foot cabin. So keep in mind, it's all off grid. There's no road access and there's no power to the property. So you got to boat in and boat out and create your own power, or your own water, your own everything. So um, <laughs> the zoning allows for up to a 1600 square foot cabin and then up to a 430 square foot auxiliary building or shed or extra cabin, I guess. Um, I haven't talked with the 
the municipality to get more details yet because I haven't really started building or haven't even started drawing up plans, but that's what I'm going to be doing kind of in the fall once we have a little bit more infrastructure in place and a tool shed and a place where I can keep some stuff and, and we're going to be setting up a little gravity feed water system. And so I'm getting some big water jug tote things. Um, and I'm going to take those up onto the hillside and make, make a, like a gravity feed water system. And then I got a fire pump that I'm going to hook up with a water line so that I can uh, pump water from the lake, which is really super clean. The, the lake water is just beautiful. You can see like 30 feet right down to the bottom, like crystal clear. Um, and like 2,500 people or whatever on the lake drink the water right out of the lake. Um, so I'm going to pump the water up with my fire hose pump that you guys probably saw in the last couple videos. Um, cause I've already got that pump and I was like, it'd be, pretty easy, be pretty easy to just hook up a, an ABS pipe to that. So I got a little adapter for the fire hose connection and then I'm going to hook that to an ABS inch and a half ABS pipe and just run that up the hill. Um, to where these uh, water, big water, I think they're 250 or three 300 gallon tanks, two 300 gallon tanks. So 600 gallons or 14, you know, 2,400 liters or something like that. So a fair amount of water. Mm -hmm. um, and then it'll be about 30 to 40 feet above where the cabin's going to be. So that'll have a pretty good, pretty good pressure because I think it's like, like one psi for every two two and a half feet of elevation or something like that and i think like a house your house is about 40 psi uh, out of the tap or something like that so it'll be close to like you know typical water pressure um if i can get it high enough up on the property so that'll be some fun kind of logistical stuff getting the tanks up there i've already cut a little little trail, little switchback trail to get up there. So I just have to flatten it out so that we can haul these big, they're about four foot by four foot. Um, they're like those big fluid totes. I know a lot, anybody in the off grid world has probably heard of them. They have like a kind of a metal cage around them. They're for like transporting uh, fluids. These ones were used for like hand sanitizer. So there's, they're sanitary. <laughs> um, they had nothing but alcohol, pure alcohol in them, um, but they've all been cleaned out or whatever. And so I'm getting a, good deal on two of those and then i'm going to take them up hey dave how's it going oh i just got back to bc hey what? join the makers Thanks. mob i know everybody wants to get in on it free but it's it's just the easiest way to be able to access um myself and, and communicate with me because we have our facebook group and then we also have um just we have our online site where you can ask questions if you're not into Facebook, but it's the easiest way to get direct, direct messages through to me. Um, and then that's how we, we set up any kind of like work weekends where people want to come out just for a weekend, check out the property, get a little taste of the off grid style living, um, see what kind of work is involved. They just want to come operate a chainsaw and hang out with me for a weekend. Um, so that's where we kind of organize things. Um, so I'm going to be doing hopefully some work weekends coming up where we're all just going to camp out on the property for the weekend. Um, and I was thinking like uh, men with saws weekend, something mm, like that. Men with everybody, saws. everybody brings up a chainsaw and uh, we just buck wood and, and uh, sit around the fire and have a good time. So um, that that's the easiest way to get involved is to join the makers mob. And then you can see real time what I'm up to when I'm moving, when I'm going up to the property. And then if you want to join, you can say, Hey, I can meet you so-and-so and we can pick you up or you can meet at the boat launch at the lake and we can organize all that sort of stuff and go back and forth. Yeah. So that's the easiest way. If you want to join makers mob, there is a link in the description. So it's that easy. What Click kind of link. plans do you have for the rear area mm. of the mm. property? Not um, I'm gonna say the, the rear the area rear area of the property, right? It's yeah. a little vague. It's a little vague. That's, <laughs> that's kind of a vague question. <laughs> well, I've got plans for the rear area. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right. Let's end right. this. I've been drinking this froster a little too much. John. A little too much less here. Uh um rear of the property. Un unofficial plans would be uh this new app has come out. Have you guys heard of it? It's called Hip Camp. And Never. it's basically VRBO, but for camping. So oh. if you have a property, you can just let people come and camp on your property and huh. just charge them camping rates. And I thought that would be kind of cool. So 
One idea I have right now is to build a couple tent platforms or just clear out some camping areas just up because there's like the property kind of goes up up from the water and there's a bit of a shelf and then there's another kind of rock bluff and then it flattens out for quite a ways after that. Um, still kind of forested and rocky terrain, but a lot easier to walk. And so I was like, oh, there's kind of like a cool area up there on this bluff that would look right over top of the cabin mm-hmm. and still have really beautiful uh, lake views and mountain views through the trees. And so I was like, oh, it'd be cool to build a couple tent platforms so that, you know, people could come and camp out for a weekend or whatever. And Guest and camping. Guest camping, that sort of stuff. So that might be the thing. And then maybe down the road – um, make little cabins or something like that that I could rent out for people and have people come and have a little samurai experience, bring their lady, you know, and she could enjoy yoga by the water while we play with saws and cut some timbers, you know. Why not? So I'm trying to think of it like a adventure woodworking tourism. What, they, they got all these cool terms, right? It's like ecotourism and whatever for like people that are into different stuff. We got to yeah, come up with one that's like woodworking experience. tourist. What's like a, how do we blend woodworking or like timber framing with like tourism? What's like a, how do we mash those together? We should Apprentice come up with for a day. No, no, no. It's got to be like something tourism. So it's like a mainline kind hmm. of term. Wood tourism. Eh, hmm. That's kind of meh. It's got to be more attractive than that. I think yeah. Kevin McCann... Uh, is going to come up with something for us there. <laughs> Kevin, come up with a name for us. Jake, Nathan. good question. Um, so there's four lots, and that's pretty much it on the whole side of the lake. The rest is just forestry land, crown land, or whatever. Um, so they're just four lots. So I've just got one neighbor on one side and two neighbors on the other side. So um, I'd love to have no neighbors, but at the same time, I'm like, these neighbors are really cool because they're the kind of people that buy off grid boat in access properties and build stuff themselves. So they're the, the one neighbor that I've met is the only other neighbor that's building right now. Um, they've been building out there for three years uh, with a whole, a couple different families all went in on the property and they're all awesome. They're all like entrepreneurial type people that just get it done and, and are, you know, really cool to hang out with. And so I've been asking them all sorts of questions and getting all sorts of information on how they did stuff and overcame all these issues. And uh, they're doing a much like bigger build because there's several families involved. Um, So I'm going to be doing it a lot more low key with composting toilets and more like work with the land as opposed to like try and like build some giant facility. Um, So, but they're awesome people so far. I haven't uh, met one of the other neighbors on the other side of them. And then I haven't even met the one neighbor to my side yet. He, he, he comes in on his boat and uh, kind of looks at his property. And he's, I think he's got a log. He's got part of a log boom in place and then he's going to be putting a dock in. And then hopefully once he has a dock in, he's got a real fancy boat. So he's not, he doesn't beach it or like get off the boat every time he comes. And I like kind of wave to him and he doesn't really look over at me. So I think he's kind of a keep to himself kind of guy. Um, but I've heard from the other neighbors who know him that he's a real cool guy. So Nice. Uh, so far, I've got good neighbors, which is awesome. And then the other neighbors are just the birds and the bees and all the animals. Haven't seen any bears yet, but lots of deer. Um, Mr. Or Mr. Foss says, my question is twofold. Say I'm installing Euro hinges for inset application. I think this is a question for me, Jesse. Probably. Should I, I'm like Euro hinges. Yeah. Should I mark the location to drill, uh, taking in account the edge banding? <laughs> or trim around the door. Uh, yes, so I was I was the cabinet maker for quite some time, so I can answer this. Uh, yes, absolutely take into consideration the edge banding thickness, if it's like a three millimeter edge banding. Uh, most of the times those inset hinges are about three millimeters from the edge to the start of the hole. So always take in account that edge banding material, especially really? if it's thicker. It's so thin though, isn't it? It's typically like, <clears throat> like 30 seconds. It's typically from the edge it's of the like door. Mil. It's a mill. No, from the edge of the door, it's three mils usually to the actual start of the hole of that door. So uh, if you're adding edge banding, that's like, like thin, like a really thin edge banding, then it's not going to make much of a difference. But if it's like, you can do like a three mil edge banding. Some people do like a thick 
like actually glue on like a three mil or quarter inch stick of wood on the edge of a door, you definitely want to consider that. So hope that clarifies that. Um, and what do we got? How do you anchor the logs in the water? Oh, Denver. Denver heat. Hide heat. Hide heat. Hide heat. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out because I just got a picture from my neighbor. How shouldn't, my, how shouldn't you? I'm showing my boat tangled up in his log boom because I set my buoy out there and it either had too much slack in the rope and it's just like drifted uh, over to the neighbor's log boom, but it was like 60 some feet away from it when we set the buoy. Uh, and so I'm like, oh, so it's either dragged the 300 pound concrete anchors that I put down there or I didn't use enough. Um, so Kevin says that when the waves come, it drags it and then lifts it up and then it relocates it. So I guess like, so. Boop, boop, so boop. I just didn't use a big enough anchor. So my, my next attempt at, um, anchoring a mooring buoy and what I would also use maybe for my dock. Cause I'm going to have to anchor the corners of my dock. Cause it's a floating dock, uh, not built on piles or anything like that. Um, I'm going to do a garbage can full of concrete. I got two, like 30, 32, <laughs> oh, 32 gallon, like brute plastic garbage cans up there. I'm going to put one on the boat and I'm just going to take the wheelbarrow down there and hand mix a bunch of concrete and just oh, fill the freaking garbage can up with concrete, Just push stuff her. a bit of rebar in there and a big eye bolt and, uh, inch that thing over to the edge of the boat and just boom, drop a, drop a concrete block the size of a garbage can in so the other thing that people are doing on the lake and there's a there's a big kind of pile driving barge um and on the back of the barge i drove by it it was over at uh the other end of the lake at the back of the barge they have a huge dock with those giant concrete blocks like the retaining wall ones you see Mm. on the side of highways yeah um so they're like four foot by two foot by two foot thick, solid blocks of concrete. And it sits on the middle of the dock and then they have a trap door that just drops and it boom, drops it wherever you want. And so I'm like, ah, I might have to talk to him and see how much that costs. But I'm like, how would that not cost like over a thousand dollars? How many, ba- how many bags of ready mix are you going to use in a garbage can? A lot it, for a bucket one, just a five gallon bale. It was two bags. Of concrete, right? It's going to be like 12 to 15, 12. Yeah, I got 20 bags of concrete <laughs> in the back of my truck that I'm taking up there right now. So we're going to pour some footings, then whatever we have left, we're just going to put it in a garbage can. Crazy. So I'm I'm learning all sorts of stuff, but, but the water is definitely testing my skills real, real hard here. So once I have a dock that doesn't float away with the wind, um, I'll be a lot better shape for getting materials out there and and doing some actual efficient building. But until then, I'm just fighting the weather and the water right now. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving every minute. Um, another question from Mr. Fa about the hinge. Uh, if they actually sell different hinges for thicker doors, so if it's a 22 millimeter door uh, or one inch thick. There's actual a different. There's actually a different hinge for a thick door that you can get. So the standard cabinet doors is made for 18 or 19 millimeter door, which is three quarters. You try and use that with a thicker one, then the swing of it, uh, it'll it'll hit the edge of your face frame or the panel on the edge uh, of the door. So you definitely want to get the thicker hinges for that. Um, You're just a wealth of knowledge. You don't even need me. Yeah, well, when it comes to the cabinetry stuff. You got it down. I got it down. Uh, I avoid cabinetry like the plague. Hey, why you make less videos now? Uh, I don't make less videos. I've always made the same amount of videos. I'm actually (laughs) making more videos now than I did, except for like way back in the day when I used to do What's Up Wednesday and Free Tip Friday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, it, the problem with a lot of people is that YouTube unsubscribes people or turns off the notifications, and so you don't ever hear that I'm making videos. But if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see that I've been never stopped making videos. So I've been posting at least one every two weeks, or maybe one a month on my slow 
slow times, but uh, the last what month or so we've been doing one every single week. Yeah, every two, Friday, last two months. Last two months we probably had six or seven videos. So uh, the videos have always been coming out. It's usually to do with the algorithm and YouTube unsubscribing people or thinking that you're not interested in my stuff anymore when you hopefully you're still you clearly are. Um, so yeah, I still make videos. Just go to my channel and you'll see a whole ton of new videos that you probably haven't watched. Yeah. Um, can you answer our questions, Jesse? What question do you have, Adam? <laughs> I'm trying to answer questions. <laughs> We're answering questions. 30 uh, foot high, is... 40 PSI, one PSI. This isn't even a question, Adam. I realize Adam. that. But I'm just saying it'll be it'll be close. Maybe it's forty feet high. I don't know. I stood up on the rock and I was like, "This is really high." It's like higher than the cabin will be, which is like twenty some feet, and it's way higher than that. So maybe it's fifty feet high. I don't even know. It's so uh, funny. But I talked with my neighbor who who runs a company that does like water pump systems. That's his job to put pipes together and pump water and stuff. And he was doing the calculations, and he was like, "Yeah, you'll get some pretty good PSI if you're like up on top of that hill." Okay, so so it it won't be dribbling out of the tap, is what I'm saying, but it's not going to be like spraying off your car like you would at home. Okay, it'll be somewhere in the middle. It'll I love be- how I love how Adam. I'm sorry, but I got to throw you under the bus. You didn't even ask a question. You just made a statement. <laughs> yeah, you just made a statement, and then he want he, he was basically like, "Hey, I just told you you're an idiot." Why didn't you like agree with me? Oh, <laughs> uh, Adam, thanks for yes, thanks for being Tom. Here. Plans for my small round end table are available, right? We put them on yes, the makers. They're is, on the makers mob. That would be uh, if you can't find them on the site. It's for sure in the joinery challenge. That was the six week joinery challenge and final project, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely in there, hundred percent. And tutorials, full tutorials. Um, and if you want to join the makers mob, click the link in the description. Bam. Thanks we for transitioning we, us there, we Tom. We teach you how to do awesome woodwork if you're into that. Seems like most people just want to watch people woodwork, though. Yeah. I'm not hey, a, what's going on? Who is, is that? Uh, what's what's Jonathan? Face? He's. Hey, Jonathan. Oh, he can't hear me. You're wearing earbuds. He can't hear me. He's, you're, he's, I'm wearing earbuds. God. Wake up. You can see Jonathan highlighted in Jesse's last video. He was doing some work up there at the property. No, he wasn't. In the last video, he was. That was Miles. Miles was Miles Gillespie. Yeah, I thought Jonathan was up there with you. No, he's coming up this weekend. He's going to drop a huge tree. For Are you me. kidding me? I didn't he's even. Make I thought I'm like, oh, there's. Anyways, we can talk. About Miles, that. he had a man bun. Jonathan doesn't have a man bun. <laughs> <laughs> Where have I been? Shit with the times. I know. I know. Uh, Vincent says next workshop. How are we going to get everybody to the lake property? Uh, good question, Vince. Well, barge. If, you have a barge. If, if our, uh, if our, never. I'm not gonna talk. Nah, my, if our prime minister would open the border, um, yeah, I don't think it would be any problem. You guys would just drive up, fly up, whatever. And I got the skiff. They, dude, that thing is so awesome on the water. My skiff, like I could not be happier with that boat. It is like a Cadillac on the water it's like it's like a dock that does 25 30 knots it's so like three foot wakes weighs rollers from other boat it's just like just skips right over top of them like you can't nothing rocks that thing it's i had a couple buddies out there and they were sitting in their tommy bahamas chairs and we were just plowing over the two foot chop and just floating like a butterfly it was beautiful and so that boat I could put probably 20 people on that boat and you wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be tippy. Um, so it's super stable and can handle a ton of weight. So there's no problem getting everybody out to the property. The question is getting people over the border with our nitwit uh, commander, Justin Tardo, um, not letting anyone over because, you know, people aren't vaccinated. I, I don't We're not get getting it. into it. We're not it's, getting it's into it. It's just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great if they, we could, uh, you know, the wood is on fire tonight. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't you really know. Should, you really should bring them back. You should do at least another video now. It would be completely different now. 
would be completely different. You've changed uh, personas since then. Have I? Yeah. I'm, I'm you were exactly you were that, exa- like smug coffee yeah. douchebag woodworker. Aren't you I? you were exaggerating <laughs> that back then. Yeah, I was a little over the top, but I'm still pretty over the top in certain areas. I'm yeah. I'm th- I'm thinking about removing the filter. Oh, I'm thinking about it. Like it kind of it. Jesse in his full form peeks out every once in a while, but then I always dial it back because I go, oh, someone's going to cancel me. Like JP, then I was like, like JP Sears or whatever? I, I was like, I was think, I'm thinking where I'm just like, I think I'm really just going to start sharing how I really feel because I really don't give a shit what people think. Yeah, um, there you go. And so it's just a matter of, you know, do I want to deal with all the snowflakes that have somehow found their way to watching my stuff? <laughs> and then when they actually hear what I, what I think, they're like, <gasps> Uh, mommy. Uh, so, <laughs> so in that sense, I'm like, I don't even really want to deal with that. But I'm like, I don't read the comments anyway. So it's like, I think I might just let it loose. Yeah, just, just uh, let the beast loose. I have to, I have to answer Mr. Fobby because he's asking another question about the hinges for the cabinets. Um, just one more. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so three millimeters is typically like two and a half to three millimeters is to the, from the edge to the start of the hole. So you're, you're to the center point is probably more like 22.5. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, all the hinges will have specs that you can look at to get the, the right uh, measurements for the, that specific hardware. So there's Jonathan. <laughs> In perfect form. The shooter just chiseled wonder. Yeah. Uh, we got, let's, I mean, there's so many questions here, guys. We're going to just pick a couple more. If we don't get to it, I'm really sorry. Um, Lyle, member of the Makers Mob, he's got a question here. When you cut the through <clears throat> Morris tenon on the bench with, with wedge vessel? Ooh, making up words, are we? <laughs> uh, I like a good wedge vessel myself. <laughs> like three-quarter inch. Did you drill a full three-quarters, then pair it? I always drill undersize, um, Lyle. Um, so, yeah, I typically will do at least a 16th undersize or an 8th undersize and then chisel out um, because that obviously just leaves you a bit of wiggle room if your drill isn't perfectly straight. And then I usually try and come from both sides if it's a long through shot and I know that the chisel or the drill might drift a fair bit. I'll try and meet in the middle, come from both sides, and then chisel accordingly on the chisel topic um it's a it's a difficult thing to get japanese uh planes and chisels but i've got uh two members in our online facebook group so if you join the makers mob um you can find them but you can also find them on facebook if you're like i'm not gonna join a monthly subscription woodworking thing i I get it some people are just not into that and they're they'd rather fart around on the internet for like five days trying to find what they're looking for. Um, so yeah, there's a couple guys on Facebook, the little, the corner or the Nomi shop. And then, and then there's the little Cornish Nomi shop. So Nomi is chisel in Japan. Um, so N O M I. So if you look them up on Facebook, uh, there's also a couple Japanese tools. So there's like Japanese tools and woodworking if you punch that in on facebook there's a couple groups that are that really geek out on that sort of stuff and they there's some people in those groups that import tools from directly from the japanese blacksmiths and so you can access them so two of those guys are in our facebook makers mob group and so you can just post questions like hey i'm looking for this size chisel or or a hand plane or whatever and then they'll jump on and be like oh i've got those in stock um, so one guy lives out in Ottawa, he's a Canadian guy, and then the other guy is an actual uh, American, but lives in Japan, works in a chisel um, tool shop there, and then also like sells used used Japanese chisels and planes on the side, like through some online shops. So, so yeah, there's a couple guys that you can get online. There's a few different online tool shops. There's Hida Tool, H-I-D-A, and then uh, Ida Tool, I-I-D-A. Uh, those are also um, sources for, for Japanese tools. But, yeah, you got to know what you're looking for. And so I always go through the guys that are in our Makers Mob group because they know the tools, they know the makers, they know the steel. And it's just there's it's a whole different world. So you, you need a lot of information on 
what you're getting to know exactly what you're getting, right? I'm actually, before we get to this question, I'm actually in the process. I've been chatting with Simon, who's in Japan, uh, right? Yeah, Simon's one of the guys. Simon's he, going and Andrew Ren. So Simon and I have been chatting about trying to figure out a live where he's actually going to do um, do like a walkthrough of the factory and chisels and kind of do that. Uh, that'd which, be super cool. Which will pull you in on too, Jesse, so you can kind of geek out with him um on that so we're just trying to it's just tough with the time difference and his work schedule and that to line up something that's convenient here too um but we'll get it we'll get it sorted out yeah uh, i should do a little wake surfing on the skiff hey eh? the skiff kicks out a pretty decent wake it's not like a wake i don't know if it's surfable but i get definitely enough speed that you could like tube or or wakeboard behind the skiff only one way to find out i know i should i should try it but it's such a like it has it's a flat bottom boat right so when you get it up to speed it doesn't really kick out too much too much wake but at lower speeds it does it does move a fair bit of water last question when does jesse buy a captain's hat and smoke his pipe i was thinking about that know what i'm actually gonna do because the skiff looks so badass on the water it's like this i you know i i ground it with like a flap disc right so it's just this raw aluminum kind of like sanded look so the hull is this big bright silver hull right that, and it's such a big boat and then the front the bow kind of comes up out of the water um um, me and my buddy Drew, or if Drew's not into it, um, we're, when we take it out of the water for the 20 hour service, I'm going to give it like a world war two fighter plane paint job with the shark mouth on the front. Mm -hmm. you know, like, remember yeah, how yeah. the old fighter yeah. planes had the shark mouth with the eye and then like the cool, like star, like checkered stripe in the back. Yeah. I was like, we're to I'm totally doing that on either side of the skiff. So I'll just be like the crazy skookum choo coming down the lake with the big <laughs> shark mouth. Skiff, like people are gonna be like, "What the hell is that boat?" <laughs> so it's gonna look, it's gonna look badass. Drew, Drew would be awesome at. Yeah, I know. I was that. like, "Help me paint this thing up." And like yeah. we can just get a bunch of tape out and put the make our own like big shark mouth on either side, like and it would just look badass. And then we'd have to mount a machine gun on the top or something like that. <laughs> a prop, obviously. But, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, um, harpoon, harpoon gun. Harpoon gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. If you missed it at the very beginning, you can watch it again and get Jesse's uh, insight on brain freezes and slurpees. Yeah. Hey. Very important. Cheers to paper straws. <laughs> the greatest idea the left has had ever. We're, we're not going political. <laughs> We're not going political. <laughs> Anyways, thanks guys for joining us. If you're in Canada, happy Canada Day. It's a bit of a weird one this year with everything that's been going on in the country, but we're also not getting into that. Um, <laughs> have a great rest of your evening, and we will see you on a live again. And we're going to do another one in two weeks. Uh, so not next week, but the, the next week after that. So, oh yeah, and two more things. If you want to see Jesse's next YouTube video, Look out for that tomorrow. And if you want to join the Makers Mob, click the link in the description. We're having a great time. Yeah. Join, join the party. There you go. All right. Have a good night, everyone. We'll talk next to you guys time. Later. Goodbye, interweb. Uh, wood, ninja, wood ninja out. <laughs> <laughs>